So, uh, welcome to this first session of Microsoft Fabric, the demo session. Uh, I'll start with my introduction. My name is Yogesh. I have 17 years of strong IT experience and eight years of experience into big data technologies and Azure cloud technology. I have experience into the various domains or industries that is banking and finance, uh, automotive industry, healthcare, telecom, e-learning domains. Uh, like I have played and playing various roles like data governance, lead, Azure cloud, big data technology, architect, product manager, scrum master. So I am playing and played various roles uh, working with these industries. This, I have strong experience into Microsoft Purview, which is data governance tool, uh, recently new tool that is Microsoft Fabric. I have done the implementation within my organization, the Azure Data Factory, uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Databricks, Azure Data Explorer. So these like various Azure Data Platform services, I have strong experience into it. I have experience into Azure DevOps, Azure PowerShell, ARM template, which is the CI CD part of uh, while deploying the various services, integrating with the different environments, how to do the automation. So along with the data platform service experience, data engineering, data science experience, I do possess CI CD related experience as well. Apart from that, I have experience into the Azure ML Studio, Azure SQL database, and Azure Storage Services, Azure Key Vault, uh, Azure Virtual Machines, and uh, like networking related knowledge as well. So as part of this course, we will go through the uh, exam preparation as well for DP600, which is a new uh, certificate launched from Microsoft. It's uh, recently launched in, in this year only for uh, Microsoft Fabric Service. So it will have the implementation of analytical solutions using the Fabric uh, Lake House architecture and various other components of Fabric. So the purpose of this uh, certification will be to uh, getting understanding on all the Fabric related components and also to implement the end to end solution within Microsoft Fabric. So the skills that will be measured as part of this course will be as part of this certification will be planning and implementation and managing a solution within the fabric preparation and uh, serve data that is like data processing data ingestion processing all that it is if you see it's 40 to 45 percent and then you like power bi related semantic models that you need to manage it's like 20 to 25 percent that part is there explore and analyze data so that is given again 20 to 25 percentage so that will be covered as part of all these services so i'll move to the uh, next slide so uh, the current architecture or the solutions and the tools that are used in the industry the flow that for any data in engineering or data science or data analytical solution which involves starting from the different types of data actually if you know about the structured data, which is like relational databases, uh, RDBMS data, which is kind of tabular format of data, rows and columns kind of data. So in all these kind of current solutions, we are dealing with these different types of data types actually. One is the structured one. Second is semi-structured data, which is uh, JSON or XML kind of format of data that we are dealing with. Third is unstructured data, which involves like raw files actually. So for example, product reviews given on Amazon or comments given by users onto the blog post. So any kind of raw English language related content we see it is called as unstructured data. We cannot fit that into any specific uh, tabular format actually. It's kind of unstructured data. So when we are dealing with these things, we then depending on the use cases, we ingest that data from different cloud data sources or from different on-prem data sources or from streaming data sources into cloud. So that is how the data ingestion process will start. And for that, we are using within the Azure cloud ecosystem, we are using the various services which are Azure Data Factory. In case of streaming data, we use stream analytics, event hubs, Azure Data Explorer as well. So this is the first portion where we are starting from the data ingestion, data copy or data pipelines. 
we will then have the data within the cloud ecosystem for that we will use the storage account the different types of storage then adl chain 2 or we will ingest that data from on prem or from this cloud data sources into azure sql database in terms of relational databases or we can ingest that data into synapse analytics as well which is the data warehousing solution or we can use azure data explorer as well so if you see in this case we are using couple of different services or systems to ingest the existing data from different sources of different types with different services into different services again via different services we are copying that data into different services we are ingesting that data so this this is the first step then we when we have to work on the analytical solution or a data science solution or a machine learning solution or ai related solution we need to prepare that data meaning we need to make it available in terms of a machine learning algorithm or to a data analytical use case so we need to do some transformations of on top of that we need to do some processing on that we need to do the data cleansing we need to remove some nulls or some un not required data from the existing data that uh, raw data that we got from different sources into these various data sources within cloud so when we do that data processing we again use different services here so if you see it's databricks synapse analytics that you can use for uh, data preparation so in some cases we can also use azure data factory uh, data flows within it so if you some of you know about these services you can relate those uh, with what i am saying about these uses of these services so next next once we do this preparation we again use the machine learning models to train those models and then do processing for that again we are going to use different services so databricks is there then aml that is azure machine learning studio we will use the new service that we have is azure open ai service so that also we will use for depending on the use case and at the end once we are uh, done with all the processing data cleansing options we generated some results or outputs of that data we will represent that data in terms of which is meaningful to the business in terms of the power bi or tableau reports so we will generate the reports uh, uh, business intelligence or bi reports so in this end to end flow if you see we are using the multiple azure services and we need to integrate these services as well so that is one of the key challenge and we have to use multiple services so to avoid these kind of scenarios so microsoft came up with the new solution that is called as microsoft fabric so all these features and solutions are available in a single analytical solution that is microsoft fabric any question anyone is having so as you said like uh... we will be moving this data from different sources so you have adf and uh, some machine learning kind of thing to integrate so if you know like uh, we are not having the experience towards the uh, machine learning kind of thing like uh, will the fabric have an automated uh, tool to generate such uh, kind of code for us at the end or else do we need to do some uh, manipulations on top of the data Stuff. yeah that you will have to do manipulations sometimes it will give us the like uh, automated code generation and you can do some manipulations on that yeah so, so it's exactly in, on to the part of the uh, data preparation after data preparation we have the model and train data right uh, before yes. bringing it to the report so yes. how the, uh, like the current fabric is going to handle that is it something that we need to have some coding knowledge or else uh, uh do we have any studio kind of thing that helps us to uh, build that uh, uh, model for the data that we extract so you have to do some preparation custom coding is also required so it depends on uh, the use case actually so in general when you are working on this project everyone will not work on all the end to end setup yeah that's so what this, this 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 will be set up by the data architects actually 
or the technical architects or the solution architects within your organization i'm giving you the full picture so in some cases you may work on just data copy activity you are not concerned of the preparation model and the bi part the there will be a different set of roles again so data engineer person will mostly do data copy or uh, data cleansing related part the bi person power bi person he will be more interested on generating the reports he is not concerned about what's happening in the back end he will just need the data input whatever he need uh, to generate the required reports the ml engineers or ai engineers they are mostly concerned on to this portion no actually these are integrated into one model right so I one think one more yeah yeah so uh, they are also depending on uh, it depends on the project like what you want to do as a end goal as a, as a end goal what what you want to achieve so some in some cases you do not need like let's say if already you have the required data you can just create the reports out of it in some cases you want to go with the uh, data engineering or ml related preparation so all projects may not have ml right so it will be just processing and bi part as well yeah so along with the service knowledge you can, should also know the spark by spark coding related knowledge so this is will be like kind of end to end picture or architecture and different engineers and different uh, roles will be there at different layers hi please please over here yeah uh, yeah sorry to ask like this actually uh, i have joined the new spark so you you are not you not yet started this fabric right no i have not started yes. the fabric so what i am telling just now is what are the current tools and solutions available when we have to develop a data analytical solution okay so just to i am just uh, creating a background of of it so we have to use multiple azure services actually and integrate those services and use those services at different stages okay i i understood so, it uh, i i got that so you can continue thank you so that's the reason microsoft came up with this new service which is again saas product so if you consider these all these existing services which are platform as a uh, service so you will have some configuration on top of it and you need to manage these services so some portion will be managed by microsoft some portion you need to manage in this case so this new solution which is microsoft fabric the, it is kind of saas product software as a service so you do not need to worry about in the back end how Microsoft is managing that storage account how it is managing ADLS gen2 or the relational database or the synapse analytical related uh, features how it is managing the databricks related kind of coding related notebooks you have so you do not need to worry about anything so even the power bi related part how how it is managing everything you do not need to worry about any kind of management just start using this service so it's similar to consider as gmail or outlook email you just use the emails you do not worry about how microsoft is managing the infrastructure in the back end the integration of those services the middleware or the ui service and the back end systems how it is integrating all those things so you do not need to worry about that you just start using that service and develop your solutions so all these all data and analytical tools in a single place so all in one solution analytical solution they have created now so you do not need to worry about the integration as well so like we have seen in the existing current architecture we have to use multiple systems and integrate with uh, each other and then we will have those challenges and also there will be silos like these power bi person will be working separately ml engineer will be working separately on separate separate tools so data engineer will work on separate tools so these silos will be also avoided and everything will be in a single place and the another thing is in this case we are copying data from one location to another location wherever it is required in this uh, end to end architecture or end to end data analytical project so here we are avoiding that data duplication so same copy of the data can be used by all the uh, like roles 
or, or all the stages of this data analytical solution so that is the benefit of using fabric so you do not need to manage different services and different copies of data it's just a single copy that you will use across all the stages it will also have a data governance data security option ai powered co-pilot like the and chatbots so you do not have to spend time on combining all these various services so that's the background of uh, having fabric so we'll move to the next one which is the architecture microsoft fabric architecture so in the previous slide we have seen like we are using various solutions that is data factory synapse analytics data breaks storage accounts azure sql databases so in this architecture if you see the base for microsoft fabric is the one legs so it is similar to OneDrive, where you just dump your files in any format um, it will automatically uh, take care of that so storage and that single copy of the data is available across all the solutions because all the services are now within the uh, one umbrella and they have renamed like or you can say they are you using different naming formats here it's data factory again so that is for data ingestion move and transfer data so that is the use of this piece again so that's what i was saying different roles will be there working even though it's a single tool different people will be interacting with the same tool you do not need to manage different services and uh, like integrate those services it will be in, under the single umbrella all these things within the synapse uh, data engineering you will have option of lake houses notebooks and transformations again so within uh, data uh, factory it is like no code no code solution you just use the existing transformations within it within synapse data engineering you can have notebooks you can write custom spark code here so that's again depend on the use case basis so if you need that or not you can just use the adf as well data factory within this fabric then you have the synapse data warehouse which is the standard like uh, high performance data warehouse solution then that you can build up depending on the if you know the oltp online transaction processing and olap the existing systems that we have so where we will store historical data or the transactional data which is coming from different systems on day-to-day -day basis and we will have stored it into warehouse and then we will generate the reports out of it that also we can do we have the azure machine learning and spark model training and execution as part of the synapse data science so uh, in previous architecture if you see we were using the databricks or aml studio azure machine learning studio so instead of that we have this solution here as synapse data science so where you will use this ml related part then we have synapse real time analytics which is to ingest the real time data coming from the streaming or iot devices and then you can in the current architecture you will have these different services for different project within the organization when you use fabric it should be a single fabric actually so all the projects will store the data into single fabric architecture within the same one leg with the separated workspaces and separated lake house architecture so you will have separate set of workspaces or you can it as like the uh, folder within that you will create your separate project related activities so it is built on top of the adls existing azure data lake chain to uh, service and it can be stored in any format the data can be stored it in any format including like delta parquet csv json and other file formats as well and the the good and important thing is that all the compute engines in fabric fabric automatically store their data in one leg at the end at the bottom all the data will be in the one leg format that is taken care by microsoft so we do not need to worry because as it's a saas product everything will be taken care by uh, microsoft 
so all the engine related part the integration related with the storage so it is also accessible by all the users within fabric so you can have access to the data all the in the previous step when we were seeing in the current solutions at each stage we are pushing data to different team or different storage accounts or different locations and different people were using that data for different purposes and different services were used in this case we have the single copy of the data available across all the services and available to all the users within the single service itself so it will be always a single copy without moving or duplicating data so the one with the current architecture or current solutions and tools we are creating multiple copies of data at different locations and different people were using it for different purpose and they again creating their own copies so that that is avoided here in this architecture the duplication of the data is it in mandatory, that use, yeah. yes, sir. Is it mandatory to have like you know, users make copies of data in the current architecture before uh, fabric? Like uh, say like you know we copy data into the data lake, right? Um, so the same data can be used by everybody, right? They don't need to modify or like. Why would they modify? Basically. For example, yeah, for example, I have initially the raw, raw data came into this one and I have uh, another solution where uh, I need to use it in SQL format only. So I will copy that data to the SQL. So initially I will get the raw data in uh, ADLS Gen2 or storage account CSVs or let's say Excel files and then I will convert that data into uh, traditional RDBMS format. If I want to uh, use that data as part of the data warehousing solution, I will push that data from uh, ADL Gen to, to Synapse Analytics. Again, for uh, different purpose, I will push that data to some other storage. So that's what was happening or is happening in the current architecture. It depends on the use case actually. But with new fabric also, these steps cannot be avoided, right? Like internally, they may, may be maintaining copies, but we may not see it. But... You avoid the integration between these uh, storage or the compute engines in this case. So, for example, if you have to use the data which is in ADL agent in Databricks, you need to mount that within Databricks and then do data processing on top of that. So now they can, everything is under single umbrella. For Power BI, if you need some data, let's say in some other location, you will push that data to Power BI. At each stages, we will be using different storage and different service and integration as well. So that is also avoided here. If you see in the current architecture, you will always need the different services and integration between them and multiple copies of data. Again, you can share the multiple copies. When you say multiple copies, the current uh, system architecture as well, we have. Uh, um, silver, bronze, gold, if we uh, yes, take yes. silver, bronze, gold, but there is a difference between the silver and data difference between the silver, bronze, and gold, right? The data transform data go from silver to bronze, transform data. Again, bronze yeah. to uh, aggregated data go to the uh, gold, right? Gold, so the, yeah. It's a medallion architecture. So each, uh, uh, the Power BI will, uh, Say for example, so as a Power BI or whatever system we talk about, that will directly source the data from the gold, uh, not from the uh, silver or uh, bronze. So uh, even it uh, even if you come to that one lake as a one place, here also we need to have in data will be transformed data, raw data, transformed data, aggregated data. We need to split in multiple places, right? So how it is vary from the 
current one from the fabric. Here also we have uh, three set of data we needed to to get that. You got yeah, that, point? that's a kind of yeah, that's a kind of best practice uh, followed like in the industry when you get the data in those formats. So in that case you are not having let's say requirement of data preparation data modeling or data warehouse the the solution that you mentioned you are just pushing that data to power bi right so right yeah so that is a different use case one use case we can say out of all the data analytical use case but when you have so in that case you can just go ahead with this solution I would not recommend fabric in that case, but okay. if you and that is that you are doing for a single project. So let's say within your organization, you have like 10 or 20 projects. In that case, you are again creating all these separate services, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Separately managing those infrastructure as a pass service, right? And then you are doing the integration of those services. So that is avoided here. So well, you will service... use. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you will use the single fabric within the organization. So all all your projects will be use utilizing the same fabric, storing the data with different uh, roles and permissions and with different layers of uh, data actually, with different layers of storage within itself only. So if it's like single project, you can just go ahead with this kind of architecture. Uh, if you just need to put, put data from different sources into this one and utilize it. So there will be different use cases. Uh, this will be a single use case. That is fine. If you have like 10 projects where there are different needs. So in that case, again, you will create different services, different roles and permissions. You will manage those uh, separate services for that project. You will again manage the copy of the data there separately. So under the same umbrella, even if you have like multiple projects, the data will be available within the uh, like boundaries again with respect to workspaces and lake houses. And then within the same umbrella, you will have that storage. You do not need to repeatedly create these services separately manage integration and storage handling of the permissions all those things so, uh, uh, when you uh, uh, explain something in the middle your case so you were not sure you noticed you were um, it was break you know so some a few minutes ago so we didn't hear what you explained i thought you are aware of that so uh, what is about that uh, the insight to the last one, the data per view, some the last in the diagram. That's I, I'll just uh, escape this one. One. Uh, Yogesh, I have a question for you. So, yeah. when you have, uh, for example, take an example that we are maintaining two projects uh, at a time, and one of my project is being uh, using some uh, uh, database kind of stuff and uh, pulling the data from the different things and storing it into the data as well. But when it comes to the Power BI, uh, what about uh, the data handling? Like, uh, do we still have that 4GB uh, capability stuff or else, uh, as we have been under the one umbrella, will uh, the Power BI has the ability to fetch more data uh, than usual? Yes. Because we are yes. going with yes. one mode, right? So how yes. about the connectivity? Is it a live kind of thing or a, uh, yes. how should the data connect it? Correct. Yes, that's what the difference is between the existing model and the new model. So those uh, will be uh, ratified in this new solution. So that's what you will always get the latest copy of data. That's the uh, that's the reason they came up with this one like leg centric architecture. So and that limitation of the data processing is also not there. As I mentioned, it's a SaaS product. So you do not need to worry about the capacity or the resources managed in the back end. And how about the roles? Because, uh, for example, I am utilizing this Power BI uh, end report uh, and publishing it into the different uh, categories of users. And uh, when I'm going to implement the role level thing, so 
do i need to maintain this row level uh, in the power bi environment itself or else do i need to go back to, and do it on the data layer where should i maintain this roles and responsibilities yeah data layer you have to maintain like uh, the roles and responsibilities because role role level data yeah that need to be ma maintained at the data layer okay that should be maintained at the data layer yeah okay so so you will have workspaces and within workspaces you will create all your uh, these kind of projects actually and then there you will have separate roles and permissions and then again you can control those access there okay no actually when we are using using some non relational databases like the salesforce or the crm uh, sometimes uh, uh, the users are uh, trying to use the data back in their data model itself not in a power bi environment so as we are bringing everything into one hub so uh, where is the last part of my data layer like uh, uh, is it is it maintained in the azure directory or else do i need to maintain it uh, in which part as we have been uh, crossing this data layer by layer so uh, on which part do i need to integrate this uh, uh, the role level uh, concept so that's what my question was so you, you you have like lake, lake houses yep yeah sorry so underneath it will always have one lake and within that you will create lake houses so there you can control that on lake houses oh the process data because this if you see um, synapse data engineering this is used for notebooks and transformations you, where you will write like custom code similar to databricks and how about the uh, the pricing because in other projects uh, when i use some uh, databricks or other stuff i'll pay uh, based upon my allocation like the resource allocation but when it comes to the fabric i need to take it as a complete uh, picture of that is correct yeah picture. yeah that is correct yeah it will have like different versions as well like uh, premium pro versions are there and depending on that costing will change so we will also look at that costing model as part of this course that's the reason like uh, because you are managing these uh, services separately for different projects so if you use it in within the like within the organization they are saying use the single fabric so avoid these kind of service creations and separately manage cost associated with that so if you see different projects will be paying different cost for different services so that can be avoided with this solution even though the cost will be high but the purpose will be or use will be by many projects or applications uh, but the thing is like i may not use all the uh, functionalities of the current uh, wing right uh, for example i only go with the adf and uh, try to build up a model and then Uh, pull the data for the reports but when i take for the fabric do i need to pay it for all the services uh, irrespective of uh, my usage yes yes it's because uh, it's cost it's like charged against the service itself like fabric service itself okay so because because as i as i mentioned in your project you will be just using let's say adf data copy but in other use cases in other projects within your organization they might have different requirements okay i hope it is more useful for the uh, composite models like the various themes composite themes enterprise themes. level consider it as at enterprise enterprise level okay that's all yeah thanks yes uh, you sorry yeah. yeah yogesh i just had one question is it, it, it does it only support saas model or i heard that it also supports uh, platform as a service right so no no it's it, a saas model okay so it's only it's only available in saas because i read some uh, articles where it says that saas is also possible when it comes to fabric but is that not the case no i i have not heard about that yeah okay so you pay for because the entire service basically yes because again you will go to this model existing model if you go with the pass you will do the configurations everything so everything they 
clubbed into single umbrella with a SaaS model. You do not need to. When you create these services separately, you do manage the configurations as well. For example, when you create a Databricks, you manage the infrastructure about same for ADL agent to the configurations of it. All those SQL database, you manage the configurations about that. Here, you do not need to manage those configurations like explicitly. Okay, and whenever we have the data growing or anything, then it's uh, it's just taken care. Uh, there is yes. reserved yes. capability in that case. Yes, so it will automatically manage those uh, resources in the backend. Okay, but uh, you still feel if we are using all the services, then this goes as a, a cheaper option as compared to, uh, you know, currently using just the services that, uh, you know, we require, even if it's at an enterprise level, like just wanted to understand that is it uh, the, the difference that I'm saying, let's say for a single project, I'm creating these many services, let's say. I, I have a, these kind of tens of services or tens of projects. I'm again repeatedly creating those services. Right, I, let's say this is one copy. This is one project I'm you creating this one. So within the organization, let's say within different departments, I have multiple projects which are using similar or different set of services. So I'm creating multiple copies of those services and managing it separately and paying separately for those services. So in that case, those, uh, let's say you have like few projects and uh, you are, the, the cost is well managed there. You do not need to worry about volume of data and all these things then that is fine like you go ahead with the single existing architecture at the enterprise level when you are having multiple projects multiple oh, like large volume of data spread across the organization it's suggested to use the fabric architecture so even though it initially looked the higher cost so if you see right now whatever microsoft has released the uh, fabric services only for our organizations it, it's not even for the public to uh, log in and get the access and play around it so that is the thing so because it should be used at the enterprise level so all the project data everything you can have in the single umbrella so that was also requirement if i have to copy data from one project to another project again i need to do the similar operations right you integrate these services in this case you will just segregate the boundaries with the workspaces and with respect to roles and permissions. But everything will be under same umbrella. All your projects, everything will be within the same architecture. So depending on need, you can just utilize those services. And as Reusability, that capacity, basically. Yeah. Yeah, reusability, so, easy access. So it will, yeah. this is an option which is good for an enterprise level which has multiple projects using kind of the similar services that you mentioned, right? Yes, yes. Got it. So um, when we build the reporting for BI, we are uh, in general, normally we are publishing that to the cloud space, app.co BI. So what we do here, uh, are we publishing again to the cloud service or? Here, here within itself, here we'll do that, and we'll share the means users will have direct access there itself within the fabric architecture. That's the reason, uh, like multiple users will have. That is the purpose. Like when I was explaining this part, the reason is everyone will have access here itself. Uh, even the business users can have access and they can see reports here itself. So when when you have the like data real time real copy of the real time copy of the data that will also automatically have refresh on to the Power BI and the users having access they can immediately see the reports there itself. There itself in fabric. In fabric. No, okay. I am in fabric. Will there be any other platform for that for the client? to see the report uh, in general what we do we'll just send, it, send them a link and they will open that link or some people go into the app.copy.com and open that i mean yes so how here will there be any service like that to see the report alone because we can give all this to the people right 
they can't say they should not say all this no no even though they will uh, get access they will just see that portion of the report only they will not see the uh, the the roles that we will assign them so based on that they will see that information okay but where where they will see that in in fabric in fabric in fabric yeah maybe once we will go through that stage we'll will show that when we will okay. like uh, come to come to this component topic uh, during the course we'll see that so internally if, uh, microsoft so, will manage yeah go ahead how it determines like you know for which use case what kind of um, like you know if we see the existing architecture we have adf we have Linux, and we have the um, databricks right so yes we have ability like you know depending on different use case we can within that particular uh, stream uh, we have ability to choose what we want right but here it determines automatically based on the use case i believe not based on the use case you will use that component of the fabric itself for example i am just doing the data copy i am using data factory I, I am also doing transformation no code transformation using data factory i will not use this component data let's say system synapse data engineering like writing notebooks i will not use that i will i may not use data science as well yeah but um say we in the phase what you are showing here prepare data is there right we have three options right yeah, we have this uh, data factory, data engineering is also there where we can write code and uh, data do data preparation transformations. Okay, so it doesn't matter like you know, small data or like large data. Um, it's, it's always like, you know, internally it handles. No, you, you will choose that component. I will show that on to this one. So within the, when you create create it within that you need to you choose while using that service and just so i'll just share that can you see my browser yeah so here you will choose the different option like if you need to work on that or not here you will see those different options synapse data engineering if you want to use it then only you will like uh, utilize that component within fabric if uh, my work is getting done with let's say just data factory i will utilize that component i will create that pipeline data pipeline i will not use that component itself so even though those components are available there it is not the requirement that you have to use it depending on the project or application then you will choose these different sets of services for that specific project so in current scenario what is happening you are creating those uh, services explicitly let's say adl agent to azure sql database you are creating data bricks and then power bi so this combination you are using in single project in another project you are creating synapse analytics you are also using adl agent to you are also utilizing some uh, data bricks for uh, machine learning purposes so other set of services you are creating there so here you the, all the services are available but you may not use all the services for your project single project but consider it as at the enterprise level within the organization having multiple projects with different sets of requirements or in any project there there might be requirement that you will be using all the services as well so you will choose those components there or all these components okay. so everything will be here itself yeah like as the power bi query was also there so everything will be here itself in the because it's a saas model you do not need to manage everything other things as you will directly start utilizing these components within the fabric in some cases i may not have a requirement of creating the reports as well so i will not utilize that component power bi component i may not have requirement of data science project i will not utilize this component 
in some cases i will have real time analytics use cases where i will be ingesting data like streaming data so in that case only i'll use this real time analytics so it is similar to azure data explorer you can consider so this service i will use so all the components will not be used in a single project hello yogesh good morning ramesh here yeah hi ramesh good morning uh, just now two minutes ago i have joined this uh, session i have two questions okay. one for first question is uh, are you sharing as the demo session uh, recording session to us first question yes like after this call. thank you second question is that uh, actually uh, i missed thought of the class that as i said my question is that do we need really the uh, prior experience related to azure and other technologies to uh, learn this technology or from scratch like data i mean data fact means it's similar to adf right so uh, without so experience have... anything will be good no no if you have that experience of existing uh, data architect uh, on the azure cloud platform this will be easier to learn if you have some basics or background on the existing data architecture or model that we have or the existing services otherwise you can just directly start learning here also that is fine but the Basically, existing I'm, knowledge uh, hmm. i'm a power bi developer i have okay. a little bit of uh, knowledge on the azure you can say like zero uh, percent on the azure side but i want to learn this technology uh to implement in the organization so I, that is a that is my basic question like as i asked so without to clear knowledge also if we uh, learn this technology you will uh, explain yes about the data factory and other uh, yes yes, yes. the purpose of yeah yeah purpose i will mention even i am uh, in my slides also i am showing that uh, can you see my powerpoint presentation yes yes yogesh yeah this is like i was started with this background like we are using different services and that is also one of the point i mentioned like if uh, others remember that uh, everyone is working in silos right so that is also one of the uh, in in this case let's say ramesh is working uh, just as an example he is more mainly focused on the power bi part he is not aware of the background what's happening uh, if i gave the similar okay. example before you joined ramesh so everyone okay. uh, will be working on diff means in general i am saying the different roles for yeah. example the data engineer who is mainly interested and working copying the data from on prem or cloud system to this system let's say dl agent he is not worried about what's happening next to that data he is not concerned about on the reporting side so that's how these these silos also are avoided here because you will have everything in single place you will have the coordination and then uh, a, a single copy of data will be maintained here so ramesh yeah, we will we'll discuss these uh, topics in details components which are also part of the certification as well dp600 and we will uh, maybe in some cases i'll just give the reference to the existing services for this is nothing but the same services they clubbed into uh, fabric so people having uh, like previous experience or knowledge on let's say data factory azure data factory they can relate what's happening here but okay. even Yogesh, that uh, yeah yeah please go ahead please go Right, no, no, even though you don't have background you will learn those things from scratch here in this case you will learn the purpose of that component for what purpose you need this component and service that you will learn so that's what happening like till now the the whole picture most of the things also scenarios also i have seen when people are working on uh, like big projects they are not aware of what's happening end to end so when you are planning for the interviews uh, it is better to know your existing project uh, in terms of end to end architecture when people go for interview they will just uh, mention the role they are playing and they will the components or the limited area of work they will specify in any project if you explain these kind of details uh, like you, it will be you'll get selected yeah you have one query ramesh yes it's my like the similar uh, here is the one of the part of the component adf 
but uh, uh, it's an another individual component in the azure side right is the both are similar exactly or what like it is we have more no, they, they have changed the... they have changed it's not exactly similar but you can relate to the existing services the configuration some of the configurations will differ here for okay. example within data factory you are creating the uh, integration runtimes the compute part of it which is there are again multiple managed vnet integration azure integration self hosted integration runtime which you are explicitly installing that configuration component that you do not need to manage here i did not know much about it but uh, generally people okay. in data engineers are speaking about the azure data factory right? here also it is one of the component in the microsoft fabric yes that's why yes. Intel, uh, they call it as a data factory now here Okay, maybe uh, uh, learning those things, maybe I can find the differences for the existing, well, what exactly is your data factor and this data factor, maybe I learn. Yes, yeah, there is difference. Means the concept is, is same, the configurations, some of the configurations will be different. But if we learn this, we can manage that one, right? If we, any, if we have any opportunity in Azure side for the ADF, we can, with this experience, we there can- There will be on, like right? a, separate configurations and separate things you need to it's the other way actually i would say if you have knowledge on this this will be easier if you go in reverse direction that because the service level configurations will differ here you like the concept okay. is similar configurations will differ okay integration will differ here you okay. do not need to like work more on to integration side here you have to work on it because adf need to be connected with different data sources you need to configure those things separately install the self-hosted integration runtime separately uh, so i just want to know so uh, assume there is a fabric is a new product from um, microsoft then my existing projects are we developed in uh, extensively using in data factory and databricks Okay. Yeah. So yeah. when I go back to uh, my client saying like uh, recommend for the fabric, they will definitely ask me like, uh, what about the existing uh, pipelines I developed in the ADF and notebook I developed in the database? All these things can yeah. I re repurpose the same thing or uh, I need to rewrite completely all the pipeline I developed in the ADF? I need to rewrite again or all the database notebook what I developed in where I need. I need to rewrite in Databricks uh, uh, fabric again or uh, how to take yeah. it? Yeah, and that is a good question. And that's what uh, organizations are struggling with this because of this new tool actually. Um, mm -hmm. And like there is no precise answer from the Microsoft on this as well. So, but the, the question that you mentioned, you have existing Azure Data Factory setup. So what uh, Microsoft uh, has done, they have, implemented one um, i do not remember that exact word but you can uh, see that data factory pipelines within fabric uh, you can mount uh, or you can see that here you can connect that data factory as it is so that will work as a kind of component of fabric itself so your existing data factory you can just mount it here and start utilizing within fabric it is nothing but your existing data factory as it is, which is just, you can say, copied or uplifted within Fabric. So, which means like, again, it will kind of embedding that, calling that ADF uh, as a uh, component. Yeah. Yeah. Go back, it will take me to the ADF again, right? The older ADF. When I... That you will manage from Fabric. It yes. will take, yeah, or everything, your pipelines, everything, you will manage from Fabric. Okay, so is there a way, uh, what I'm thinking, you know, so uh, we can export the code, the current ADF to the JSON formatted, right? The code, what are the pipeline? And that won't work. That won't work yeah. because the architecture is different. Yeah, to yeah. configure. That's what I was saying to Ramesh questions also. He said, like, if I learn this data factory, can I, can I relate back to this? So I would say this is the foundation. And if you learn this, this will be easier. But yeah. if you learn this, this. The other way it will be difficult. Right, right. You were saying back to reverse. I mean, reverse. I'm asking like forward, you know. So, what I developed the ADF pipeline so far, 100 pipelines yeah, yeah. developed, I, 
I just wanted the egg port as a JSON. Here, can I no, no, put that? Won't, no, that won't work. <laughs> Okay. Because okay. that is the issue because configurations are different in existing ADF architecture or configurations. Oh, so I need to rewrite all the ADF pipeline then. That's what you are recommending. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or or you just mount it here, embed here. And yep, utilize your existing ADF. Okay. So uh, maybe like I okay. So for the existing pipeline I need to still use can still use that older one. Maybe like the older one, but can... that you will, yeah, that you will manage from fabric. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So the same question I come to that uh, Databricks side. So Databricks, I have the current Databricks. Uh, so first, before that question, you know, so uh, fabric is coming out of Databricks, right? So they don't want, they're not recommending Databricks, use uh, Databricks, right? Everything, what you want, you can use in fabric. That's what you try to say, correct? Right? Yes. I don't need to Databricks. All I, whatever, uh, whatever transformation whatever of uh, whatever yes yes um, that's the reason they clubbed all these things capabilities into single solution even the reporting side or the work uh, warehouse solution so because for warehouse you had to choose synapse analytics separately right so all the data and all i mean currently what are the notebook i'm developing the databricks all the feature the databricks available in data engineering notebook that's what you try to say right it will available yes can yes use can you use yeah, code, or right? whatever available. See what what Microsoft had done initially. The Databricks was separate service. It's like different organization altogether, right? And right. that's that's the reason they came up with the Synapse solution, where right. you have the option to write similar notebooks, which is a native Microsoft product. Right. Right. So, so and right. within the Synapse also, if you see what they have clubbed these two services data factory and databricks mm -hmm. and the sql data warehouse solution so synapse is again a combination of data factory databricks and the data warehouse right. so okay. three services clubbed into single service okay now just the yeah right. now everything all these again separate services clubbed into single fabric architecture uh, right. So uh, now database is competitor to the fabric. There will be uh, uh, no more uh, recommended by Azure, right? So it will it's be a not competitor to exactly to the fabric. It is uh, competitor to Synapse. We can say because Synapse you can write those uh, Spark notebooks. Right. But but Synapse all together come to the fabric, right? Still we can say it's a competitor, right? So now Synapse is part of uh, fabric. Yeah, Synapse is part of Fabric now because, as I so, mentioned initially, initially they they integrated ADF and Databricks into Synapse. Right. These two hmm. these two services into Synapse. Okay. Now they came to know that these other things also need to be clubbed into single service. Okay. So as as the evolution happening in this industry in terms of data engineering data analytical ai related products they came to a need of this fabric tool right. it's not the case that microsoft directly came to this solution they have taken feedback from different industries and based on that they came to this tool actually right uh, so uh, i didn't work in the snaps in the past so snaps were saying it's a combination of data factory and databricks right this is what we're saying right? Snaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you create, if you, uh, if you have seen data factory, you will see as it is the all the components you will see in Synapse. Okay, all the components. Yeah, all the all that is a kind of subset within Synapse. Mm. Okay, so uh, again back to the same question. Sorry to interrupt you, you know. So uh, to others, you know, maybe like uh, I'm trying to recommend to that my current client for that reason I'm asking. Definitely they'll ask this kind of question to me. You know, so what's my second question? You know, forget about ADF. When you come to the Databricks notebook, Databricks I have option to export the file in uh, IPython format or uh, whatever format or uh, I can export as a BBC or IP IPython format. Can I use that existing notebooks? in exported notebook in IPython format. Can I use that notebook, import that notebook yes. in fabric and continue yes, the work? Yeah, you can run that, yeah, same code because the underneath uh, cluster will be changing, right? Mm -hmm. Either you run uh, from one Databricks workspace or a different Databricks workspace. The 
code will get executed onto the engine some spark engine right so that engine will be available here as well so you will just utilize the similar format to execute your notebook so you were saying same notebook will i don't need to apply any changes uh, which i apply you know 100 commands all the transformation i performed in notebook that notebook will continue working in that uh, data source connections or anything that you will have to change where you are picking up the data let's say you are picking up the data in data frame from adl agent too so that mm -hmm. will change here that configuration will change okay the source of but, but 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 the internal will not change yeah 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 source and Inter target makes sense i yeah, i need to change the source and target and all this yeah thing. The intermediate step connection. will not change yeah no, no. okay all the statement uh, say for example transformation all the python functions what i use all the merge statement all the data breach utility what Should i use work, yeah Sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. But That's that won't work for data factory because you need to mount it and then execute that pipeline. Otherwise, you have to create new pipelines in here. Okay. So data factory it won't support, but data bricks it will support. That's what you're saying. Data factory it will support mounting. It will support embedding. Okay. It will support existing ones. Yeah. So, but data bricks we can support. It will support. Mm -hmm. Because the engine so, will be same, right? Engine will be same to execute the code Spark, Spark. Right. Jobs. So besides engine, so the Databricks notebook I'm using for the Delta table I'm using. I have the uh, uh, DLT and uh, Delta Delta Live table. I mean, lot of features provided by Databricks itself, right? All those features are recommend. Uh, uh, um, all those features are available in Fabric. Is continue to work. That's what I. I so those, yeah, also. those will be those will be available and taken care by uh, Microsoft in this case as part of Lake House or One Lake architecture. Okay. So in Delta tables, uh, you will have the like transaction history, right? You can do time travel there. So same yeah, will be good. available. Yeah. The concept will be same. Naming convention will be different. Yeah. Configurations will be different in some cases. So when you have to recommend, you need to check the use cases of the clients, existing use cases. It's there is no meaning to migrate on existing architecture to this if it's just a single project. If you have multiple use cases and then you go ahead, go ahead with at the enterprise level, this need to be uh, like taken like taken into the consideration. Right. Thanks. Well, thanks. Next, next they will ask about the costing, right? Uh, where I can see the costing and all for the fabric? That I will show that there are different uh, premium pro versions that we need to select depending on that cost will change. Yeah. We'll go through that one session as well for costing. Right, right, right. So the advantage of coming out of uh, different tool from ADF, Databricks, Power BI, uh, all separate tool, we'll come to the fabric all in one place, all in one store. One group. Yes. This is the one. Yes. Is yes. That okay. is the benefit. Yes. 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 And for so, the so at the enterprise level, that is another at important the, factor. Right. Okay. This is the core here in the fabric. That's the crunch of the fabric. So if you see in this the multiple uh, different engines, also uh, the question that you are asking, you have the transactional SQL queries, query engine, Spark engine. Costo query language, which is real time analytics. So, this is currently used in the Azure Data Explorer service. So, same set of services, whatever I was showing here, they translated into Fabric, the BI part, the reporting part, the analysis services. So, all those engines will be able to communicate to the one leg storage or like single copy of the data that can be uh, handled through multiple engines. So they are they are uh, they are accessible to this one one leg. Th that's the benefit uh, actually here. Yeah, yeah I guess like uh, for example, uh, I am working on one report. Uh, so, uh, you are also working on some uh, some other report. But we are uh, all are using same data source right here as you said. Like so, uh, as per the requirement, someone changed that logic. How other reports also may impact right? So how can we handle that if you are if they are maintaining in the single one leg storage? Now you will not change the original set of data, right? When you are creating reports, you will do some aggregations and then they, that you will put up on the report, right? 
for example i will ask in this grid for example we have some some of sales is, is <clears throat> sales price is there so uh, in my report i'm uh, extracting that one field here so so as per the requirement someone has deleted that uh, colon or someone something was happened removed that something. will affect that will affect that will take impact if someone deleted that that will take impact in your report as well yeah, how can do we know any uh, like uh, so no, a, a, then that's the reason that that roles and permissions need to be taken care okay okay who so, should have access to that data because that also need to be taken care that can happen with the existing architecture also let's say where, where you are accessing the data on the source side if someone delete that data that will not be available for power bi yes but at present we are only one to one right but coming to here uh, one uh, centralized location to many reports we are developing right so if, uh, if i'm using one report then i can know like only one report uh, will be affected but in this scenario all people or who are the users can access the single point of data base uh, storage yeah, that area can then become can... single single point of failure yes that can become single point of failure yes so you will cover with the use cases and other side right? like to work on yes. independent okay right. yeah that that uh, that will come under like roles and permissions so the people who are having the exact uh, roles and permissions they can only access the data they should not have let's say on, they will they will have read act so we'll like stop the today's session any additional queries anyone is having another good feature is that we can integrate it with the other cloud services as well amazon or google they can also integrate with the one leg storage so this is the this is what microsoft is saying that first multi cloud data lake so this is also one good feature of fabric it is accessible by any application or any service so again yeah the roles and permissions will come into play but that is also possible to integrate it with the other cloud services so again you can avoid data duplication here so you do not need to copy data from azure to google and do some processing there or from google to here that kind of things you do not need to do copy data from azure to amazon and then do some processing you just bring everything into the fabric and then use it um yatesh the the one lake is back backbone by separate different from gen2 data lake or different adls gen2 are different one lake is based on yeah adls gen2 yes okay so the gen2 is currently accessible for the amazon as well right so this is not a new or a... even i am using aws uh, the aws how we are accessing s3 uh, from azure the same way they can access from amazon aws to azure um, adls storage right so this is already available in gen2 itself right or is something new in product that i am not aware like if you can i think that might be new feature or something but what microsoft is right now advertising is uh, um, thing is it is multi cloud one leg one leg again in the sense there you might be again integrating with different adl gen2 accounts the use case the that's the reason i started with this one the the base of this why we are doing the fabric so in that case maybe you are dealing with again four or five different projects you will have different adl agent to accounts and you are again doing the separate connections or configurations and connections to these different adl agent to account from amazon so in this case everything will be in single place all the connectivity will be in at the single place that yeah that's the difference miss that is the reason i started with this background what's happening with the current solutions tools so that will be directly again accessible by any application or service and multi cloud uh, integration as well so that will avoid data duplication so there also if you want to use this data that you can utilize you do not need to uh, 
like create you know, multiple integrations with different data sources different adl gen2 accounts from amazon or google if that is currently available so as part of this course then we'll go one by one in detail of these and we'll see the uses of uh, each component here at each stage so it will take like some time for each separate component to go through it in details and as we have more queries we will go through that way as well and here just like one of the use case you will have uh, lake house notebooks and then you will prepare train and prepare that and you will do the experiments so here you will separately using the machine learning service or data bricks so here that also is clubbed into single one so as synapse adf data bricks adl gen to storage data warehouse uh, data factory and data explorer power bi all those services are under the single umbrella now at the enterprise level that's the difference actually when you always compare <clears throat> so if you uh, come out of like single project that will benefit more here in terms of fabric architecture I means whenever you have to recommend to the clients also that is the purpose if microsoft is saying to use this there is no use of migrating from the existing single project architecture to here but gradually what will happen they might decommission any of these services because they they will promote to the fabric architecture that can also happen like to promote the uses of fabric they might decommission any of these existing services so <laughs> from tomorrow we can continue on the like starting on the uh, in details of of the workspaces capacities costing and then the start on the different components and use cases what's the last slide so th this is like the use case within the fabric so similar way what i have drawn uh, for the generic use cases here also you will see that structured and structured streaming data uh, machine learning models that you can utilize within the fabric for store database so streaming data you will need the store storage so data source will be within fabric then ingestion uh, data pipelines processing then storage again within the different form of data and then use it within the power bi reporting but here data so we can it's here already data ingested in the one lake house right that then what again ingestion what is the role of ingestion data source and ingestion store yeah so this ingestion is uh, to the different uh, like custo query format here is their custo database so the for streaming data you will use the stream analytics this one real-time analytics synapse real-time analytics which is azure data explorer service where it uses the kql custo query language if you see in this one this this will be used custo query language custo query is new to get in work this kind of insert update will happen or only for the select that 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 op options are available so it is actually this is nothing but azure data explorer service this service is there so th that is also created on top of the uh, if you know the log analytics so internally microsoft using log analytics service or custo query language kql so based and they found that that is very high performant and that's the reason they came up with adx service where you will store and again generate the dashboards or reports separately and uh, you will have the high performance in this kql uh, language so that's the reason they came up with this solution as well which is uh, included in fabric the custo query the data you store in the one day is uh, only for the read only or read and uh, write can be read and write as well yeah both 
because you will do some transformations as well so that's where you will use lake houses for just to use the relevant data so lake house can can update the data as well right so the lake house or only where else yes yes go? lake house yes So we'll go through like in terms of certification as well as and these details, um, the specific components, use cases, implementation, costing, management, administration, all those will be also part of the course. We'll stop sharing. What is the duration of the course and when, what class time is? So it will be same like uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and it will be around 20 to 25 hours total. We have many components, right? And the one, uh, so all will be covered in 20 day, 20 sessions. Uh, so I really surprising. I don't know exactly. Like, we are yes, explaining many components, right? Yes, services. Yeah, so if required, we'll extend it. Like, we'll go through like basic and important uh, factors about it, like the flows. Then, um, because there will be many configurations or use cases, so. You can practice it like uh, separately. If you have the access in your organization, that also you can do. Or there, I need to find out a method with the Gmail account if we can create that, but I doubt that because it's basically available to the organizations only. So when we learn like the specific components there, we will like, I will define the scope for that component itself. And then when we are learning the other components, you can relate those things. So while learning those components, we will do data processing, for example, like work on that component, we'll do some transformations, utilize data, process data. The same thing you then you can utilize depending on the end-to-end -end flow where you need to use. Because as I mentioned, in some cases, reporting might not be there. In some cases, stream analytics won't be there real-time data ingestion won't be there in some cases data science won't be there so the use cases will differ again if we have to use all these services in one go in some cases and there won't be streaming data so we will not use the synapse real-time analytics but as part of the course we will learn that component Okay, then thank you all. I'll, I'll close the uh, this today's session. Thank you for joining this session.